In this video, we will be looking at making secondary colors using both warm and cool of each of our primaries. So the warm and cooler red, the yellow, and the blue. And this is a great exercise if you're trying to avoid making mud or you're wondering how to keep your colors really clean and not looking so dirty. Okay, so let's get started. I have a set of watercolors here. This is a, a pretty basic set. There's 12. Um, this is a swatch card for it. So you can see here there is a warm and cool of the red, warm and cool of the yellow, and warm and cool of the blue. And those are the only six that we'll be looking at for this exercise today. All right, so you'll need a little piece of paper. It doesn't have to be all gridded out like this. This is just to show you for the demonstration. As we get started, let's wake up our colors. So putting a little drop of water on each of the primaries that we'll be using. Okay, so I have some pens as well so that I can mark out exactly what we're doing. So on our color wheels, when we looked at our warm, say, our red, yellow, and blue, we got a bit of a dirtier mix, more of a muddy color mix here for the greens and also for the purples. But if you'll notice on the cool set, they're a lot brighter. So we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise and show you how to get these secondary colors. So we're gonna focus on making the oranges, the greens, and the purples. So let's start actually by labeling our sheet here. I did this in pencil first. It might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but I have an orange, a green, and a purple square for each of the warm and the cool shades that we'll be mixing up. So I will just go ahead and write these down so it's a bit easier to see exactly what I'm doing. Let's do all the warms going this way, all the cools going this way, and then the cool warm and the warm cool mix. Uh, if this doesn't make sense, and just follow along and then paint after you watch it the first time so that you'll kind of know where we're going. And these two on the end are gonna be the mix of the cool and the warm, but then alternating. Now I am using a waterproof ink pen. This is a Micron. You could use something like a Sharpie as well because I'll be painting over these. I don't want the paint and the ink bleeding. So this for sure I know will be good if I paint over it. So that's something to note if you are following along exactly. So we know from our previous color wheel, the red and yellow will make the orange. This is the cool red and the cool yellow and it made a slightly different orange. And so what we're going to do is start with the warm set. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab some of the warm yellow and just pull that down. Make a nice little wash here. And then we're gonna make, rinse that up, the warm red which is this one. And then that will give us a really warm orange. So that'll be our first square. Okay, so what I'll do is just so that I know which warms I'm using, I'm going to be putting in the warm red here. Okay. And then I'll grab the warm yellow and I'll put that right here. So I know that this is going to be all my warm colors. In fact, I could go down and do that with all of these, but let's, let's not confuse things. Let's just start with the first swatch. All right, so to get this orange from two warm colors, we'll mix these. That's a good, nice, bright, warm orange. And that is going to go into this square right here. Okay. 
And then because these two are wet, I'm going to try not to touch those. Otherwise, all that watercolor will mix up and bleed into each other. So we'll let that dry and that gives you a very good representation of orange using two warm colors, the two warm primaries. Let's continue with our orange line here. The next row here, cool and cool. So we're going to use our two cool primaries, so the cool yellow and the cool red. So let's go into our cool yellow and pull that down. And then the cool red. And then try to get a medium orange. Maybe a little bit more yellow. It's quite a red orange there. So let's put that in the next swatch. And I'm trying to get the same saturation level so that it's an even test. Okay, so we got our two cools. Oh, and we need to put those on the bottom here. So let's grab those. So the cool yellow. The cool red. Let's let that dry. Watercolors will look different um, as they dry. So when it's wet, it'll look one way and as it dries, you'll see that it'll be slightly different. Okay, and now we can do our combination ones where we did two warms and two cools. We'll take our yellow and red and make one warm, one cool and then flip them and do one cool, one warm. So before I forget, let's put in that cool yellow. We'll put in the cool red. And then we'll do the warm of the yellow and red too. Warm yellow. And the cool red. This is a pretty strong color, so I just think they'll need a little bit. Okay, and now we'll do the cool yellow with the warm red. Okay, we will let all that dry. And we'll move on to the green swatches. I will refresh my water and also clean up this palette. So for our greens, we'll be doing yellow and blue, warm set, cool set, and then the flip of the warm and the cool. I can go a little bit quicker this time now that you know how we're working these out uh, and you can follow along. So I'm putting in the cool yellow first, and then I'll do the warm yellows here. And that's the yellows in, and then we'll do the blues.
Okay, so now my guides are in, and if it's easier for you to do it this way so you remember which mixes you're making, go ahead and do that. So I've got my warm yellow here, and I'm adding in my warm blue. So you'll see it makes quite a muddy, earthier version of a green when you have two warm mixes like this for your blue and your yellow. Okay, we'll let that dry. Now we'll do our set of cools. You can already see that's quite a different green when you use a different temperature of color. So this is why it's really important to know what kind of primaries you have because you will get such a different blend and a different feeling from your mixes. And there's no right or wrong, it's just depending on what you are painting, your subject matter. Okay, so now this is the warm and the cool. So the warm yellow, grab that here. Okay, and then the cool blue. Okay, and now our cool yellow and our warm blue, which I have a cool yellow right here. And let's get the warm blue. Some pretty green. Okay, so the green row is done. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back and check out our purples. Okay, I refreshed my palette and water, ready to go. So we're going to be doing the purples, which is red and blue combinations of our warm and cool. So we'll do a bit of a warm red here, warm red here, cool red here. And cool red here. And I will also put in the little warm and cool swatches. So we'll do the red on the first ones. So warm red. Our cool red. And our cool red. And then let's get our blues. So we need our warm blues. And then our warm blue again. Sometimes you get too much water, you can just dab that off on your towel. And then our cool blues. Okay, so now that we have our guide, let's mix them up. So we have a warm red and a warm blue, so I'll do this one here. Okay, cool red, cool blue. All right, so warm red, cool blue. So warm red, cool blue. Okay, and this one, last one, cool red and warm blue. So grab some warm blue, add it to the cool red. Okay, 
Okay, so we have done our chart. Let's let all of this dry and then we'll come back and take a look at it. So now that everything has dried, you can see quite a difference in each of the different colors. So for the oranges, you can see some are really bright and some are a bit dulled down. And the same with the green and the purple. So this is definitely a great exercise to do if you are new to watercolors or color theory in general. This is how you avoid making muddy colors. Or for example, if you intentionally want to dirty up a color, now you know how. You'll need a warm and cool of each of your primaries and you can always push your colors to lean a little bit more on the cool side or the warm side. The other way to get an intentional dirty color is to mix the complementary color in with your base color. That is in another lesson, in another video. But in the next video, we'll be using what we learned here to create a split primary palette, which uses the best of both worlds and all of the things that we just learned here. I hope that you had fun with this exercise and when you are ready to move on, check out the other videos in the basics playlist. And I'll see you in the next one.